If you're ready to unlock new potential with your forms that you use to put data into your Airtable database, then this video is for you. We're going to be going into a lot of detail on a pretty complex setup here that unlocks totally new potential between your forms in JotForm and the way they interact with data in your Airtable database. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses get organized and automated by unlocking the true power of Airtable and Zapier. Now, in this video, as I said, we're going to be going into detail on building a really cool, advanced type of form. Specifically, we're going to be using JotForm, which is a third-party software that we're going to connect to and uh, our Airtable database. And in order to get this awesome functionality, we're also going to be using an additional software as provided by OpenSide. Effectively, this is a widget that's going to unlock new potential between the way that JotForm and Airtable communicate. Okay, but before we get into it, if you're new to this channel and you're interested in upping your Airtable game, be sure to click subscribe, give this video a thumbs up so you don't miss out on future content. Okay, let's, with that said, let's just jump on into my screen. So in, on my screen here, you're going to see that we have a very simple setup in Airtable representing cities and states. So, you know, we have the state name, uh, so the states field, or excuse me, the states table uh, starts off with the state name. We also bring in the state code, uh, the, you know, the two letter abbreviation, and we're linking two cities. Now here we have a one to many relationship, right? One state, many cities. And so we're linking to them. For our example, we only listed a handful of states and then five cities per state, just in order to demonstrate this uh, awesome integration. That being said, uh, moving on from there, we have the state capital being brought in. You'll see this is a lookup field, and I'll come back to this in just a minute. And I'm also bringing in the state record ID. Uh, this is metadata per every record uh, that you can just access by building that easy formula. Uh, also, if we're to drop into cities, you'll see that we've got our city name and uh, then we're linking to the state. As I mentioned, this, of course, is a, a one to many. So we're not allowing that to link multiple uh, times here. Uh, we're also bringing in the state text. Now, this is important because when we build out the cool stuff that we're going to do with this integration, the uh, we're going to need to effectively do like a lookup field based on the state. And for that, if we were to use the linked relationship here, the state name, it breaks down. It uh, treats it like an array or uh, a record, and instead we want it to look at the text itself. So for that reason, all we're doing here in this formula is referencing that state name. That's it. Okay, then we also have the capital checkbox. So for the capital city, we box, uh, checked the box, and then uh, using a quick uh, formula here, we're able to look up the state capital and bring in the city name if the box is checked. Now, this is the field that we're going to do a lookup on back at the state level. And then we also have that city record ID. So again, this state capital here is what we're doing a lookup on back here at the state capital. We're just saying, hey, look at the cities and bring in the, the uh, capitals that we've uh, put out there. Okay, pretty simple setup, as I mentioned, but let's get into the awesome thing that we can build with the form. And this is going to be mind blowing. Now I'm going to start at the end of the form. So this is the forms already built. And I want to show you first and foremost, what we can do with this form. So what basically this form is talking to our Airtable database. And so you'll find the exact same seven states that we've listed here right? And it's looking at the state table and it's saying, hey, pick a state from the list. Okay, let's say I pick Michigan. As soon as I do that, you see that it tells me what the capital of the state is. And it knows this because of that state capital. So let me really quickly swing back into my air table. This state capital field right here is what's populating this data in the form. So this is a really cool use case because very often you'll want your form uh, submitters, those people who are putting data into your form, you'll want to be able to have a lot of stuff pre-filled. Like let's say you select a client, you want the uh, address to automatically pre-fill, right? Or and, you know, just for an example, this is a great way to have that kind of data uh, do exactly what you need without needing to type in the same thing over and over and over again. Okay, so that's awesome in and of itself. 
But here comes the next really cool part, and that is that when we are selecting a city, this is smart enough to know only the cities that we want to look at. That is, the cities that have a relationship where they've linked to the state. So again, let me swing back to our Airtable database here. And you'll see when I go into the cities, if I show you the cities from Michigan, those are the five cities that we've listed out right there. And it knows, because I selected Michigan first, it knows to only show me those five cities that belong to Michigan. So it's almost like building, well, it is exactly like building a parent-child relationship here. And we're saying the state is the parent and the cities are the child. And so when we select the parent, we only want to see the child uh, records that are attached to that. So that's a very cool use case uh, that we can get into here. You'll notice that if I change the state, let's say I change it to Georgia, automatically this updates to Atlanta being the capital, and then I'm going to see the other cities or the cities that relate to Georgia. <sighs> okay, that is pretty cool. Setting all this up takes a little bit of work, and I'm gonna go into detail on how to get it done, uh, but first and foremost, wanted to showcase the awesome thing that we can create, right? Okay, so let's turn the preview off because right now I'm in preview mode on my uh, on my Jot form, and let's take a look at how we get this thing going. So first and foremost, as I mentioned, we've got these special widgets that came from on to air, and that's what we're using when we're building this. Now the first widget is the uh, simple select, and that's where we are saying w exactly what table we want to look at for the options that we're going to fill in on this form. Next, I'm using the placeholder. So where we're bringing in the capital city, that is using the placeholder widget, and that allows us to pull data that lives in the first place. So again, we're looking at the state, and then we're displaying specific data that was associated with that state in using the placeholder widget. And then thirdly, we're going into the subselect, and this is where we have that parent-child relationship, right? And so once we've selected the state, then we use the subselect to tell us which child uh, relationship we want to unload. So let's get this set up. The first two are pretty straightforward. We'll go into those first. Inside of the simple select, if I go into my widget settings, first I need to create a token. Now this comes from OpenSide, and they give you step-by-step -step instructions to do here. I want to keep this brief so I won't go into detail on doing this, but it's a pretty easy thing. You can just follow the steps yourself and create this token. Okay, so from there, I need to tell it what table I'm looking at. This is my table name, states. If I drop back into my air table, you'll see that I've got my states table here, and that's what I'm telling it I want to call on. All right, so next is display field. And display field, we're going to tell it what we want to show as the display name for this record. And so in this case, I want to display the actual state name and so that's what I tell it to look up there, state name. And then these value fields, these are the fields that we want to pull data out of the Airtable database for and use in future parts. So of course we want that state name. That's going to be important when we select a city and uh, bring in the capital. And also we know that we want to use the state capital. Now you'll notice that these are separated by a comma, but not a space. So separate your fields with a comma don't put a comma in your field name that will break this down so make sure that your field names don't have commas and also separate with a comma forget the spaces unless the field name itself has a space and then include it hope that made sense okay we're going to turn off allowing multiple because we only want them to select one state at a time and that's it for setting this up now i'm going to go into properties and i'm going to swing over to advanced I'm going to come down to the bottom here for field details, and I'm giving it a unique name. I'm calling it state, but also I need to look at this input number. Now, this is going to be important when we call this data from the parent-child relationship. So just note that right here, this says that this is number three. So we're going to be remembering three, and we're going to come back to that in a minute. All right, so let's move on. In this one, we are going to look at the widget settings. Now, remember, this is using the placeholder. So for the widget settings here, this is where we bring in that three. This is input number three, so meaning we're looking at the input from the state, and we want to display the field name of state capital. That's as easy as that is. All we're doing is bringing in state capital, and we're outputting it right here. Easy peasy. All right, so 
let's go ahead now to the third step. And that's where we have that parent-child relationship so that we can make dependent conditional variables or cities as, as they rely on the state that was selected in choice one. All right, so jumping into that, we're going to, once again, we generate that token. You'll notice that this is the same token that I used in the previous one, and I'm going to go into the cities here. So this time I'm looking at the cities table, and this time let's quickly refresh our memory as to what cities looks like. So over here we've got city name, state, state text, or I'm sorry, city name, state name, state text. All right, let's look at that. So over here, I'm displaying the city name. Again, uh, I'm gonna leave the view name blank and the parent input index is three. So remember that three that we found uh, for the state that we used for both steps two and three. All right, now we're gonna talk about the parent field name. So effectively what we need to do here is we're gonna perform a bit of a lookup on the parent field name inside of the city's table. So the parent field name is state name, right? Or excuse me, the, the parent field name is, is this one here. We've already selected this field name in our previous step. So state name is the parent field name. And then here we need to bring in the, uh, the child search field. And we're going to do that by effectively performing a lookup for that state name. So here inside of the, uh, the table, we're saying, hey, let me drop back into cities. We want to look up the text that appears here and perform a lookup against the state name. And so the way we perform that is state text, right? Because we had to make that text. And then we have that double colon and then state name. All right. And that's it. So once we get all that set up, again, we can then preview the form and we get something really nice like this. Of course, you could customize the CSS and all that other stuff, you know, to your content and uh, to your heart's content. And once you're there, you select the state, capitals automatically displayed, and then you get a nice drop down of only the cities that pertain to that state. So, hey, to wrap this up, I realized that there was a lot that we covered here and there's a lot that goes into this setup. If you have any questions, definitely reach out to our friends over at OpenSide. They do awesome stuff to help the Airtable community and they would love it, I'm sure, if you started using this tool and you could share with them all the cool ways that you've done it. I'm sure they're also able to help you get set up. Uh, uh, so just go ahead and reach out to them. Let them know what questions you have. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you you can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.